So let's start with cardiac output. Cardiac output is the amount of blood that is ejected from the left ventricle of your heart out to the rest of the body in one minute. Now, your body has about five liters on the average person of blood that it needs to circulate throughout the body. So if your heart, which acts as a pump, is not able to pump enough blood to the rest of the body, what happens? Basically, what does the heart do? The heart is a pump, but what is it pumping? It's pumping blood. And what does blood do? Blood carries oxygen, and blood also carries plasma, which helps inflate our peripheral veins, our veins and arteries, and sustains blood pressure, sustains life for us. Because if oxygen gets cut off to an area, we know that that area of tissue dies. For instance, if I put a tourniquet around my finger and just wait, 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 what would happen to my finger if all the blood supply was cut off? It'd start turning pale, right? Start turning cold. Even get cyanotic, blue, correct? And that's what happens if we don't have enough oxygen and blood flow to the body. So cardiac output is the amount of volume of blood pumped from that left ventricle out the aorta to the rest of the body. So let me see my notes here. Cardiac output is your heart rate times your stroke volume. Now, what is your stroke volume? Your stroke volume is the amount of blood in one good clean pump. So make sure I got that right. Yes, it is. So um, how much your heart is pumping in one clean push from that left ventricle? For instance, in cardiac failure or um, congestive heart failure, there's a lot of pressure being backed up from the rest of the body because of the high blood pressure. So this left ventricle has a great amount of pressure to overcome to pump out. So the stroke volume is decreased. It can't pump all at once out to the rest of the body. So there's a backup of traffic in this left ventricle. So what happens? The left ventricle swells because all that backup of traffic is trying to push but there's so much pressure coming down on it. So it has to inflate because of all this traffic jam that's coming down. And that left ventricle has to work even harder to try to push against that resistance, that high blood pressure that it's meeting in the rest of the body. Does that make sense? So that left ventricle now begins to swell. So your stroke volume becomes decreased when it's trying to push blood, but it can't. Your cardiac output now is being compromised. And what happens to the left ventricle? We call that left ventricular hypertrophy. And how do you measure if the left ventricle is being hyperinflated? How do you measure, um, how do you measure that in a lab? And if a lot of you guys uh, have been into medical terminology, you would know that the lab test to regulate this is your BMP. Your BMP, what is BMP? Your BMP is your brain nutritic peptides. Now, I get a lot of questions about this because they're like, I have students asking me, you know, brain nutritic peptides, okay, first of all, what is that? Um, we're not taking a Spanish class, right? But um, brain nutritic peptides is a um, compensatory mechanism from the brain that the brain is trying to communicate in the brainstem to the left ventricle saying, hey, you are getting hyperinflated. I need you to pump more blood to the rest of the body because we're not getting oxygen. The um, cardiac output is not able uh, to sustain the oxygen in the peripheral veins. Now, why does your brain send this signal down to that left ventricle? 
because we know that there are regulatory um, mechanisms that control blood pressure and it's all located in the brainstem. Now if I have my notes right here, um, there's a, a vasomotor, <laughs> vasomotor center in the brainstem that controls the blood pressure as well as different areas like your kidneys, uh, in the RAS system, renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. If you haven't seen that video about club RAS, that, how ACE inhibitors work, it's a really awesome video. It's a cool nightclub too. So I just related to a nightclub, so take a look at that video. But back to BMP. So the BMP, your brain is trying to communicate to that left ventricle, saying, hey, we need you to um, take the pressure off so a normal BMP for healthy people will be 100 and less. Does that make sense? So if you're looking in your patient's chart and you see, okay, a BMP of 75, that's great. That's like uh, having a good cholesterol or having a sinus, um, a sinus rhythm or just normal. Now, when your BMP starts getting serious, it goes up to 300. This is usually in um, people with beginning into CHF, congestive heart failure. Now, I had a patient that had a BMP, now I, no joke, BMP in the hospital setting of over 25,000. That is a lot of brain nutritic peptides coming from the brain trying to communicate to that left ventricle. And this patient was in severe um, congestive heart failure. So that left ventricle was having a failure to pump. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Because the cardiac output now is being decreased because it can't push a lot of blood out in that one minute. That stroke volume and the amount of blood that's being pumped has so much resistance against it. And this is where we get to preload and afterload. So preload is your stretch in the ventricles. So you know how we talk about how ventricles stretch and squeeze, right? So they stretch, fill blood, and squeeze. So if there's too much pressure being backed up, they stretch, 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 and not able to have a good, clean contraction. It's more like this, because it's stretching way too much and not being able to squeeze. Now, afterload is the degree of pressure in the aorta to overcome, to push blood. Fancy word for how much pressure is in this aorta Right here, does this left ventricle have to overcome to be pushed out to the body? How much does this ventricle have to really try hard to squeeze? That's your afterload. So, in patients with CHF, or congestive heart failure, or hypertension, or cardiopulmonary, um, you have a backup of pressure into that left ventricle causing a bigger stretch, a bigger preload, and the afterload is really trying its hardest to squeeze. So what are some things in the uh, clinical setting that the medical staff implements to bring down that afterload, bring down that preload? And in an acute MI, if you guys know what that is, a myocardiac infarction, fancy term for the heart's dying, they have a heart attack. In a heart attack, we give nitro, we also give um, morphine, and that really brings down your preload and your afterload. It has a direct effect on the preload and afterload. Because after you do your nitro, you're trying to expand those highways of the heart, it's a vasodilator, trying to relax that left ventricle. Because that left ventricle is stretching, 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 we want it to relax just a little bit to get a good, clean squeeze for us. Does that make sense? The same thing for your morphine. 
Your morphine is an analgesic, central nervous system opioid analgesic. And acting on the central nervous system, we know it's in your brain. Same thing, kind of, like what your BMP tries to do uh, in telling your heart to relax. Morphine will relax the heart and relax that preload and relax that afterload. So hopefully that makes sense uh, with your cardiac output, stroke volume, preload and afterload, and makes sense with your congestive heart failure patients. So hopefully that was a little helpful. Please leave us a comment if it was, and go to simplenursing.com to pick up your patho bible, the top 70 diagnoses that people get admitted to the hospital for. Thanks.